let's see. So your last two is due right right now, right this second. So if you haven't already, please bring up your lab two, stick it on the file. Um, make sure you get that turned in. Uh, if you submitted an exam regrade to me last week, um, those have been finished. And so you should check your score on uh, Blackboard. It, it has been updated <coughs> if you gave me a regrade. If your score looks the same, that means that you just didn't get any extra points. It should never go down, so it should only have gone up or stayed the same. Uh, if you want to pick up your regraded exam, or if you weren't here last week and you just want to pick up your exam, um, then you should come into my office hours. I have office hours tomorrow from 1 to 4, and also on Wednesday, or Wednesday is tomorrow, on Thursday from 1 to 4. Um, so you can come in anytime uh, tomorrow or Thursday to pick up your exam, and I'll probably give you any homework assignments or anything like that uh, as well, because I've got too much paper in my office, and I need to get rid of it. Um, let's see, there will be another assignment posted on Thursday, that is a promise, so you have that to look forward to. Uh, any other questions right now before we start in on today's recruitment? Fantastic. All right, let's go over some review questions for starters, and then we'll take a look at some uh, practice problems. So who can tell me uh, the differences between a mealing machine and a more machine? So which ones did we see on Tuesday or on Thursday last week? What kind of machines did we see on Thursday? Those were more machines, right? So what's the difference between a mealing machine and a more machine? Yeah. Go ahead. Exactly, yeah. So that is uh, the primary difference in a more machine. The output is determined solely based on what state we're in. In a million machine, the output is based on the transition, which is a function of the state and the input, right? So how does that affect our circuit? If I were to draw a circuit for a uh, music machine, uh, which we're going to do a lot today, actually, um, how would that differ from a circuit for a more machine? What would be the difference? What would I expect to see? Yeah, so where, where do we find transitions in the circuit? That's maybe a sort of a good lead up question to this one. If I'm looking at a digital logic circuit for a finite state machine, I'm going to point to something and say, oh, that's a transition right there, right? Where, where, am, I going to, where am I going to find that information? Where am I going to find that piece of the circuit? Uh, but in the circuit itself, in the circuit itself, it's, uh, well, certainly wire involved, right? I mean, what is the basic configuration of a finite state machine? I have to have a flip-flop, right? So here's my flip-flop. What's the flip-flop do? In a state machine circuit, <coughs> stores the state. So I'm, I might have multiple flip flops. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit, right? So I have n number of flip flops, right? Over here, this is usually my output logic, right? So what are my outputs? And then over here on the left side, feeding into the flip flop, is my next state uh, logic. So this is what chooses the state that I go to next, right? And, you know, it's entirely possible that this value gets fed back in over here. We saw examples of that uh, last Thursday. So, you know, we said that the output is the primary difference between a more machine and a Miele machine, right? So the, the output for a more machine just depends on the state. The output for a Miele machine also depends on not just the state, but also the inputs. So right now, this to me looks kind of like which of the two? More or melee. Looks looks like a more machine. It's really just dependent entirely on the state. If I wanted it to be a melee machine, then I would have also have my output, right? Some kind of a function of the inputs as well, right? So I would see the inputs of this coming in and affecting my outputs, which you know make means that my outputs are no longer synchronous, right? They are now asynchronous. They are going to change whenever the input changes. In a more machine, they will only ever change when the state changes. So that really is a, is a big difference between a new machine and a more machine. Hopefully that will become a lot more clear when we uh, start creating some mealy machines and drawing some logic circuits uh, for the different types of finite state machines. Um, 
So if I give you a finite state machine that has n states, and I say I want you to use binary encoding for those states, how many flip-flops am I going to need to pull that off? This will be a function, right? You can't give me an exact number. You would give me an expression. How many flip-flops am I going to need? So you know, I give you three states, right? How many flip-flops do I need to represent those three states with a binary encoding? Two, right? I need two. I'm sorry? It'd be the ceiling of log base two. You're absolutely right. Log base two of n. Right? Should give me the total number of flip-flops that I need. Uh, in this case, right, I have three bits, or I have three uh, states, rather. I can represent three things with two bits. So that's two flip-flops. If I have eight states, I need at least three bits to store that information, so that's going to take three flip-flops. What if I use one hot encoding instead? I have n states now, and I want to use one hot encoding. How many flip-flops do I need for that one? Yeah. n. That would be n. Right? So that's uh, a little bit simpler. What, is, what does that mean to use n flip-flops for one hot encoding? How does that differ from the binary encoding that we talked about? What do those flip-flops then represent? Or one hot encoding. So with our binary encoding, right? If I look at a flip-flop, that one flip-flop alone is not going to be enough to tell me whether I'm in a particular state. Right? I need the entire combination of flip-flops in order to determine what state I'm in. With the one hot encoding, that's not true. With the one hot encoding, if I look at a flip-flop and it's on, it's high, I know for a fact that I am in that state right now. And it doesn't matter what the other values are for the flip-flops. In fact, I already know what the other values for the flip-flops would be. They'll all be zero. I expect only one flip-flop to be high at any point in time. So there's a trade-off, right? <laughs> the one hot encoding is, uh, I think, a bit simpler to understand. I've got one high signal, so just find the, find the flip-flop that's high, and that's the state that I'm in. That makes things conceptually easier, but what's what am I losing in the process? Which is going to be uh, uh, the smaller circuit, binary or one hot encoding? Binary in most cases, not all cases, but in most cases, the binary encoding is going to lead to fewer flip flops working in the smaller circuit, right? uh, which means a more efficient circuit, perhaps. As well. Uh, I guess they could be equal. There's yeah. only one state, um, or even uh, yeah, there's only one state here. Yeah. yeah. However, you have to take the the next state logic into account as well. Uh, I believe the example from the video showed that even though I used more flip flops, I had fewer gates to determine my next state transition. So I I did save some um, did save some on that side as well. Uh, what is that? Oh, fantastic. Wonderful. Okay, well, I hope nobody was eating because that's gross. Uh, cool. Well, I'm glad you took care of that. Anyway, uh, where was I? Uh, okay, yeah, this last question. So I give you a finite state machine, I ask you to minimize it. You have two choices. What are those two choices that we saw in the video? What are my two possible options? That was the cockroach, that wasn't here. <laughs> so I need to minimize the finite state machine. What am I going to do? Yeah. Exactly. Right. So I can take the original finite state machine and I can try to pick out the identical states and condense them together one at a time. Right. Or the opposite approach is to just condense everything down as much as possible and then try to split them apart. Um, the second option, where you condense everything down and you try to split it apart, that's the greedy option. 
right? If you've uh, taken algorithms class, that is, a, in fact, a greedy algorithm. If you haven't taken algorithms class, then you will learn what a greedy algorithm is whenever you get around to that. Um, and actually, from my perspective, that is my preferred method. I almost always prefer to do it that way. But you're welcome to use whichever method makes the most sense to you. You'll have a chance to practice uh, that in just a second. Um, are there any kinds of conceptual questions before we try and do some practical problems? Anything from the video that was confusing? Any terms you didn't quite understand the concepts you didn't quite grasp? Can somebody tell me what it means for a finite state machine to be deterministic? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So based on my inputs, right, I only have one direction to go. So here, you know, I might have a one, right? If I had another transition from this same state that also went on a one, that's no longer deterministic. It's now non-deterministic. If I see a one as my input, I now have a choice to make. Right. Which way do I go? This way? This way? Both? Neither? It's unclear, right? Actually, the answer is technically both. You start to have sort of an alternate universe situation, uh, which is not something that we want in this class. You take other classes, that's actually okay, but in this class, that's not okay. Uh, so don't do this. Don't ever do this. Um, there is one case that I don't think that I talked about on the video, but um, is worth talking about just as all the same. What if I see something like this, where I have a state and I see a transition on this value, but I don't, I mean, there's another value that this could be, right? It could also be a zero, but I don't see any transition at all for that. Is that okay? Is that not okay? What does that mean? So I can see why you would make that suggestion. However, it is okay. It, it actually is accepted. Um, in fact, uh, we'll see some examples <coughs> today where that is the case. If I leave an output off, it's sort of an implied transition to a dead state. So anywhere that I have a, a transition that is not explicitly labeled, I've got this outcast state sitting out, out here in the corner that is just where transitions go, right? Um, and once I get to this state, I can't go anywhere else. It's basically a failure <coughs> condition, right? If I end up in this state, something went wrong. I don't like to typically draw out all of those conditions because that just clutters up my state machine diagram. It makes it too messy. I have too many transitions um, handling all the different error conditions. So it's usually implied. If I don't see a transition for a given input, it's going to cause an error. Be an error, it's going to lead me to a dead state um, where I can't get out of it. Okay. Does that make sense? So, uh, cool. All right. Unless there are any questions, let's try a couple practice problems. So, first problem you saw this uh, finite state machine in uh, one of the videos. This is for the garage door uh, scenario. This is, in fact, a war machine. And so your first task is to think about this and say, well, what if I wanted to be a mealy machine instead? Right? How would how would that look like? Shouldn't take you too long, I don't think. Take a few minutes. Talk to your neighbors. Uh, I'll be around. Ellie will be around if you get stuck. Have any questions? We'll talk about it in a few minutes. Oh. 
Anything on the out here? How do I perform this conversion? How do I turn this into a linear machine? What do I have to do? The thought process, the, the steps, the steps behind it. You know, I need to get the outputs out of the space and into the transition so that I can't just start throwing them around and pulling them in, right? What do I need to do? Is there a rule that you kind of came up with? 
taken on case by case basis. That's really important to understand. I've drawn a sample tiny diagram up here on the board, right? Let's assume that we're in this closing state. We're in this closing state. And using the rule that was just provided to us, uh, we want this output go down to be true whenever we transition into this state. So from here, or from here, or from here. As soon as we see that we're at the bottom, right, that output should then so if I examine this from the more perspective and the melee perspective, let's say that this is our uh, this is our um, at bottom input, right? This is our clock. I want to know what the value of go down, right? Our go down output will be based on this timing diagram for both a more machine and a melee machine. <coughs> So here I see the output changes, right, from low to high. So I, I think everybody would agree with me that up until this point when the signal is low, that the value of go down should be high, right? Because I'm, I'm in the closing state and I'm not yet at the bottom. So for a melee machine and a more machine, right, this signal is going to be high until, at least until I see this transition. Right? So for a more machine, when does when does this signal, if it represents, um, go down, when will this signal actually pick up the chain? At what point in time? In this timing diagram. The next rising edge of the clock, which happens here, right? So if this is a war machine, this signal will not actually change until that particular point. Okay, well then let's talk about the melee example as well. So this will be the... This will be the same signal, but for a melee machine. When will this when will this signal change? At what point in time? So think about what state we're in. I'm in the closing state. I see that the output or I see that the input changes. So the input changes from 
um, at bottom being zero, which is this transition, this self loop, right, which is going to have an output of one, to this transition here, right, to uh, 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 with the input value for at bottom being true, which has an output value using our rule of zero zero. So that's going to happen instantaneously. That's going to happen right away. I don't need to wait for the rising edge. As soon as that input changes, I'm going to pick up on that and do it right away. And do it right away. So yeah, I get the same behavior, but I get it at a different time. Again, that's the difference between a melee machine, which is going to have asynchronous. They're going to happen whenever the input changes, versus a more machine, which is going to have synchronous values. If I take this and I move it back a little bit to here, the more the more machine is going to change at the exact same spot. The melee machine is going to move along with that signal, right? It's going to move back so that it's always matched up with that change in input. Yes. In, in the circuit, is that one for because or in when you use your input and determine the output, essentially just bypasses the flip flop and you don't actually wait for the flip flop. Yeah, so the flip-flop is still going to have an effect, right? What, en what actually ends up happening, and this is not the specific circuit at hand, this is just an example, right? I have something that determines my output. And the flip-flop is still going to be fed into that logic, right? There could be multiple gates here. But then the input will also be fed into that logic. With the more machine, I wouldn't see this. I wouldn't see this at all. I would just see the flip-flop side of things feeding into the output logic. And so the fact that I have inputs also feeding into the outputs is what determine is what makes this asynchronous. Uh, that's a very very important point, extremely important point. Um, so, are there any questions? Anybody not understand? Yes. Absolutely. I think the rule that was proposed actually works fairly well. Um, I can't think of any cases, at least in this particular example where it's not going to work? Yeah, of course. So I'm going to look at the output for a particular state, and then any arrows that are pointing into that state are going to have that output. So if I look at the pause up state, right, I see I have two arrows pointing into it. So I'm going to take this 0, 0 and apply that to this transition, the self transition, as well as this transition here. Because in a mealing machine, our outputs are dependent on the transition, not the state. No, the state remains. The state, the state still is. Sorry. No, the inputs are still here. The inputs don't go away, right? So, like this one, I would want to include this output. So the way that I would write this transition would now look something like, uh, gosh, I'm out of room. Here's my state, right? Let me just draw it out. Closing 0, 1, and then I have this transition on 0, 0, x, 1, 2, close, right? which has a value of 0, 0. So this is a more machine. This is what we're starting with. If I want to take this very small piece of this more machine and convert it into a melee machine, I'm going to take this off of here, and I'm going to apply it now to actually any transitions coming in, which in this case might be the self loop uh, 0, 0, x0, zero, now gets that output. This would also get that output, right? This value here is applied to any transitions coming into this state. So this output gets removed from the state and gets applied to any transitions going into that state. We can say slash and then the output values on that particular transition. And the well, a transition is from one state to the next, so it's already dependent on the state. In order for it to be dependent on a transition, it is by default dependent, also dependent on what state we are currently in. Because this input is going to leave me somewhere different if I'm in a different state. Right? Well, what thing was the second error going to close? Uh huh. And if the error was drawn one to zero, 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 one, one, one. one. Yeah. Oh, the output? Yeah. So I don't know what this is, but yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't. I'm not sure I understand the question. 
Well, we're going for more than you would if the close hit had been zero zero. Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, I think this would break things, though, at least in this particular example, it certainly would break things. The output does not match the behavior of our finite stage in this case. Okay. So that's something to be very familiar with the machine, but would be happy to follow. It's still, it's still a melee machine, right? I just think it's a melee machine that does not represent the same finite state machine that the more machine represents. It's a different one. It's something else. This is not incorrect, necessarily. It's different. Um, yeah. Good question. Any other questions? Alrighty. Uh, again, you know, the difference between a million machine and a more machine, one is not necessarily better than the other, right? They are both useful in different circumstances. You'll notice the behavior is the same, right? It's just the timing that's different. And so that's what really matters. How fast do I need to know that information? How fast do I need that output? Do I need it right away or? Can I wait for the next rising edge before I get that output value? Yep. That's really the main question that you need to ask if you're deciding between relay machines and more machine. It probably depends on what you've got it hooked up to farther on down in the circuit. Right? Um, so it's not a, it's not always a black and white answer. One is better than another for a particular case. And you know to make matters perhaps uh, uh, even more complicated, um, you may in fact run into cases where uh, you see sort of a combo effect where I have outputs uh, determined um, by state as well as by transition. Um, although I don't think we're going to look at any in this particular class. Does that go over one of those? I think it does. And we're not, I don't plan on actually covering that in this, in this particular course. Okay. Any questions before we move on to the next one? Uh, cool. So here is another finite state machine. I want you to minimize this. I want you to get this down to as few states as possible. And you'll notice, like I was talking about earlier, right? there are some implied transitions <coughs> here, meaning that uh, from this state, I see a transition on a 1, but I don't see any transition on a 0. Well, that there's an implied dead state right? that that 0 transition means it goes nowhere. It goes off to a dead end. Um, and same thing for this state. right? I don't see any transitions out of this state. Well, any transitions from this state go to that um, you don't have to include that, but if it makes you feel better to include it, then go ahead. Um, it's, it's typically implied. So minimize this using whichever method you prefer, or both methods. It's good practice, and uh, we'll go over the solution in a few minutes. It's a, it's a very good question. You can always take something from a more state and then you know, take it out. Yeah, you get the clock. Right.
लिया Transitions. I want to try and find states that have similar transitions uh, to one another. So I'm almost done here. Here's state three with an output of zero, and then finally state four with an output of one. So what can I condense in this particular case? What states am I looking at in terms of conditions? Yeah. One and two. Let's take a look at states one and states two. <laughs> I forgot to label this transition. Let me do that real quick. All right, so if I look at states one and states two, I see that both have a one coming in, right? Uh, on a zero, they both transition to the same place. On a one, they also both transition to the same place, right? So condensing one and two seems like a logical choice. Do I have any disagreements with that? That seems okay. All right, let's take a look then and uh, try it out. So I'll actually just take this off entirely, right? And I want to put, you know, S2 in here just to indicate that I can bend them down. What am I missing? I need a self loop, so I need to copy that all the transitions. Okay. What else? Anything else happen? Any other takers? Yeah. I'm not sure on this one. Could you condense uh, S0 and S2? S0 and S2. Three. Okay, so S0 on a one transition goes to this newly condensed state. S3 on a one transition goes to this state here, and they both have the same output, right? So they both are outputting a one. Um, what do you guys think? Is that okay? Is that not okay? I see some people shaking their heads no. Why? What's the counter argument? Yeah. They don't have the same outward transition, so if I try to transition from here on a zero, I can end up in the next state. If I try to transition from here on a zero, I go to that no man's land, that dead state. Um, so unfortunately, that can, uh, does not work. Unfortunately, that does not work. Are there any other suggestions for condensing states down? I think this is actually it. So perhaps a bit anticlimactic, right? Uh, but I think that's actually about it. So let's try it the second way, just uh, for completeness sake. So the second way says take all the states that have the same output and condense them together. So 1, 2, and 4 will be in the same state. 1, 2, 4, because they all output 1. And then uh, state 0 and 3 will also be condensed down. Take 0 and 3 because they all output 0. 
And now, notice I didn't include any transitions. We don't do that part quite yet. We do that part very last, as a matter of fact. Now I'm looking for <coughs> reasons to split these up. What am I looking for in order to split these up? What do I need in order to justify splitting states up? Can you help me out with that part? I know this isn't the answer, right? I know this isn't the answer. This is what I ultimately want to get to. So, you know, how do I justify splitting things off? Yeah. It's, a, it's one of the states. Right, so I'm looking at the transitions again. Uh, so for example, right, state 0 and state 3, if I look at where they go, we actually just talked about this one, right? State 0 on a 1 goes to state 1. Actually, right now, state 3 on a 1 goes to state 4. Actually, they'd be pointing at the same place, so maybe that's a poor example. I can't justify splitting those up yet. What can I justify splitting up? Yeah. You can justify popping that 4 out. I can take S4 out, right? Because S4 on a transition, any transition goes to a dead end, that dead state, uh, whereas 1 and 2 go places, go somewhere else, right? So I can split that off, and so then what I would end up with is a new state for S4. S1 and 2 would still be condensed. So here's S1 and 2, and then here's state 4. And now, I mean, we already know the answer, so it's a little bit easier for us, but we can take a look at S0 and S3 again and, and see what those transitions are. I see S0 leads me to S1. S3 leads me to S4, which we just said is a completely different state. So they take me to a different location. They no longer lead me to the same that state. So now I have to put these up, too. Now I have to put those uh, apart. <clears throat> So S0 and S3 are separate. And so there's all, really only one combination that I can look at, and we know, based on our previous example, that that's going to survive, right? I can't split that up. And so the last thing to do is to stick the transitions in, and I really sketched this out poorly uh, for that to happen, because it's going to be <coughs> something like this. Uh, We've got the self loop here on the one, then we've got a zero over here, and this is just a mess, but so be it. These are the same. They don't look the same, but they're the same. Um, and that's all there is to it. Any questions about that particular approach? Yes. Talk that the merge states that are not that all cancel are not transitions with the last They're not connected to each other. Yes, uh, absolutely. It is possible to merge states that are not connected to each other if they're pointing to the same location. Um, you know, just a quick simple example, right? So I have S0 transitioning, right, to S2, and then I also have S1. Transitioning to S2 on the same, same input, then I can put down. Potentially, I mean, it, I left off a whole bunch of stuff over here that could prevent that from happening. Potentially, right? But, um, yeah. Question? Yeah. Can you tell me one more time why you can't find S0 and S3 states that are both of them? I can't combine S0 to and S3. Well, the, the problem is not the dead end. That, that's actually where they agree. Um, the problem is that on a 1, I end up at this particular state. And on uh, S3, on a 1, I end up at this particular state. So I end up in two different locations. And we have to think about the future as well. Uh, right? So once I get here, I can't go anywhere else. But once I get here, I can still move around. So they are different. Um, great question. Any other questions? So, um, regardless of the technique that you use, minimization is important because we want to keep our circuits small and efficient. We don't want to have any more space than we actually need. Um, uh, if, if you expect that there is not a lot of minimization to happen, then actually the first method is going to be your best choice because there will be very few condensing operations that need to happen. If you feel like there's a ton of extra states and you need to get rid of a whole bunch of them, 
then the second method is actually going to be faster for you, right? Because you're going to condense a lot at the beginning and you won't have as many splits to do. Um, but they should both get you the same place uh, every time. All right, fantastic. Uh, this next one is probably going to take us a little while. In fact, it might be a bit more than we even have time for. But we can do as much as we can uh, in the remaining half an hour that we have. So, you know, we have, let me, let me erase this ugly thing here. All right. <coughs> We have this minimized state machine here. Uh, I don't need this either. We have this minimized state machine here, right? And I want you to draw a circuit for it. I want you to draw a circuit for it using the following conditions. I really don't think we'll have time to get to all of them, but you know, try and do as many as you can in the next, uh, let's say, 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll uh, try and go over uh, as many as you can in the remaining time. Uh, yeah, we'll be around if you have any questions. This is great practice, by the way. This is, uh, uh, while it's a long problem, uh, you know, I certainly will be probably asking them some kind of variation of this problem on the next exam. Great, great practice.
talk about this one a little bit together. Uh, what should I do first? Should I just start drawing search components? Start drawing AJs and hopefully it falls back. Yeah, what should I do first? I like the idea of not necessarily a truth table, we call it a state transition table, but yeah. Same general idea, right? But even before I do that, I need something else. Yeah, I mean, what's going to go in my transition table? Yeah. I need to figure out what I'm going to do for encoding. So let's just do the first one with the binary encoding. The simplest way that people would probably think about this is to just right, apply <coughs> counting and binary for each particular state. So I know that I need two flip-flops because I've got two bits here. But we already knew that, right? We already knew that that was going to be the case. I need two flip-flops. And so I'll label each of these bits, right? I've got B0 and B1. And now I can create that state transition diagram. So if I, uh, I need B0, B1, my input, I'll just call my input X, right? And then I want to know what, what I'm going to transition to. So what's my next B0? You'll sometimes see this labeled as B0 prime and B1 prime. And then what my output is going to be, which I'll just call y. Okay. So if I'm in state 0, that means that b0 and b1 are 0, 0, respectively. And I've got a transition on x to 1. That leads me to state 1, which is going to be 0, 1. Okay. And then the output here for y actually depends since we're in a more machine, depends only on what state we're currently in. So that's going to actually remain at zero until we get to the next state. Does that make sense? It seems like since we're going to this next state, right, that the output should reflect what the output is in that next state. But this is the output as we are in our current state. So this is the next state, and this is our output based on what state we're currently in. Right? Yes? <coughs> That's a great question, yeah. So what do we do if, in the case that x is 0? Um, we wouldn't necessarily want to include it. Uh, you could include it. That would make things a little bit trickier for us. Um, it wouldn't be wrong, though. right? So the question is, what do we do for this particular case? Do I have a state for this? I don't. But I could, if I really wanted to, I could add an additional state. That's going to bring in an additional bit. Which again is not necessarily a bad thing. However, I think you would be able to construct a circuit in such a way that it's not necessary, um, as we'll see when we get to actually constructing the circuit uh, later on. So you can add those in, absolutely. Not wrong to do so, but also not necessary to do so either. Okay, so now we are in uh, state one, right? So we've got to take care of the transitions there. So in this case, I've got two possible transitions, right? So if x is zero, I end up at this state. 0, 1, or 1, 0, sorry, and my output is going to be 1. And then the other transition here uh, takes me to myself. So two states down, two to go. If I'm in this state here, I've just got one transition to worry about, which is, uh, let's see, S3, uh, S3 is 1, 0. If the input is a 1, then I'm going to go to 1, 1, right? And the output uh, will be 0. And then for this last state here, I don't have any transition, so that's also kind of a unique case, right? 1, 1, what do I put here for x? I don't care, right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me what, what x is. If I'm in this particular state, I'm basically just done, right? Um, so what, where am I going to go? Well, I don't know where I'm going to go. I don't care necessarily, it's just done, and I'm going to output a 1 in this particular case, right? So this is our state transition diagram for this particular circuit. Any questions so far? Questions so far. All right, so the next thing to do then is to try and come up with logic equations for each of these uh, bits, for each of these bits over here. So we can start with B0, right? I look at the cases where it's true. 
I say I want this to be true when you know I've got so b0 prime is equal to b0 naught b1 x naught b0 uh, well that prime is now becoming very confusing isn't it? sorry about that I will switch to line notation just for the sake of uh, this particular uh, exercise instead of prime uh, b0, b1, and x not, or uh, b0, b1 not, x. Right? Either one of those particular cases will lead to this being true. Uh, we can do the same thing for b1, right? Similar equation, b1 prime is equal to like b0 not. Uh, B1 X or B0 B1 not <coughs> X. And then we can't forget our outputs either. I've got three particular cases for the output. So Y is equal to uh, this term again. X B0 not B1 X not or B0 not B1 X or B0 B1 Okay? Yes? Uh, do you need a third term for B1? Do I need a third? Oh, I do! Thank you for pointing that out. I missed this guy. Thank you. I missed that one. Right? That's the one that I'm missing. And I didn't leave myself any room for it whatsoever. The B0 not B1 not X. Uh, thanks for pointing that out. Let me see if I can just squeeze it in here. B0 not B1 not X. Thanks. I felt like I was forgetting something. Okay, and so now that we have these logic equations set up, we actually are ready to start getting the circuit. Right? So let's, let's try it out. <coughs> When I'm sketching a circuit using this particular method, I like to place my flip-flops in first. I know how many I'm going to need, right? There are a major part of all of the equations, those flip-flops, so I like to slap those in first. So here's my flip-flops, and I'll go ahead and label them. You know, this one will be B1, this one will be B0, right? Here's my clock input for each, here's my input, my output. These will just be wired up to the clock. Right, so now I just have to figure out how to feed these. And now I just need to start you know, constructing the various components. Uh, it'll be tricky for me to fit this on the board, but let's see if we can uh, try to make this happen. I see that I reuse a lot of terms, so I probably want to try and use that fact um, my advantage if I can. So I'm going to have a lot of three input AND gates here where I'll say, you know, B0 not B1 and then X, which is going to be uh, my input, right? Coming in. And then actually, I sort of do this a little bit backwards. Let me redo this the proper way. Sorry. I like to keep my next state logic on the left hand side of my flip flops, so let me just rewrite this over here. B0 is going to be a three input OR gate, or a two input OR gate rather. So here's my two input OR gate, each of which is fed by a three input AND gate. And now it's up to me to feed in the rest, right? X is one input, B0 not is the other, so I need to wrap this around. B0 not, and then B1 is 1. Right, so there's one of them, and then the other 3 input AND gate will have the next term, which is uh, B0, B1 not, and then X, and I'll see if I can tap into the, so this is B1, so I want this to be B1 not, B0, and then x not. Right? 
So that takes care of one bit. Do we see? Do I see any reused terms for this one? Uh, well, it does. It reuses the second term, so I could reuse that in my OR gate for v1, for example. It reuses uh, this term here, so I can feed that in. All right, and then I would just keep repeating this process. I would need two more three input AND gates to tackle the other conditions. Uh, as you can see, this diagram is getting very messy very quickly. Uh, so I need B0 not B1 X for one of them. I think I'm going to kind of stop here before it gets too complicated with the ne next state logic side of things. But then I do want to talk about the output side of things. Why, right? So that's also dependent on B1 and B0. And uh, <coughs> actually, not x. I apologize. Uh, I made a I made a grave error earlier, <coughs> and nobody called me out on it. Or maybe somebody was waiting to call me out on it. When I wrote out the equations for y, I included x, but that's wrong. Why is that wrong? It's a more machine. This is a more machine. By including x here, that's a Mealy machine. The output y depends only on the current state that we're in. So you should just ignore this column entirely when, when uh, constructing the output equation for y. So that was my mistake, which makes our lives a little bit simpler, right? It's going to be b0, b1, or b0 not b1, or b0, b1. This should be not, 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 not true, true perfect, right? So again, that would be, oh shoot, Ugh. how do these whiteboards work? Okay. So again, that would be a three input OR gate, right, for Y, and then a whole bunch of AND gates to uh, configure that particular logic. So I'd have B0 not B1 not for one of them. I'd have B0 not right, uh, B1 to the other one, and then I'd have B1 and B0 the uh, And so you can see this is not complete, right? I need to complete my uh, ne next state logic over here. With these three input AND gates. That's really the only thing that's missing, I guess, are those two three input AND gates. That's all I would really need. Uh, to finish this diagram up, and then I would have a finite state machine, uh, a circuit that implements the finite state machine. Are there any questions about this? Yes? Uh, yeah, so that's a good question. Thanks for asking. I, I meant to follow up on that. So if I'm in S0 and I see a 0 coming in, what exactly is going to happen? Well, if I'm in state 0, then that's going to be the case where these are both outputting 0, correct? So I'd have to consider what state I end up in uh, next. So what would that happen? We have to look at our next state logic, right? Um, if x is also 0, I see that these AND gates would be off entirely because, they, well, this one would actually be on, rather. I'm sorry? Be off. Oh, because of the, uh, yeah, like everything. Everything is off, yeah. So these would all be off, and then these would also be off, right? Which actually means what in that particular case? What would we end up in? We would actually end up in the... So something went wrong. Uh, again, I'll take the, the fault for that one. It would actually end up in a self loop, which is not what we want. So that's actually a different uh, state machine than what we uh, intended it to be. So how could we fix that particular problem? Earlier I said that I didn't <coughs> think that we needed that additional state, but now I'm kind of thinking that maybe we do need that additional state. Sometimes you have to do that state. Wired up to the 
puts it up in a puff of smoke. No, I think we would need a third flip-flop, actually, to account for that particular dead state. Um, this flip-flop right, will be true if we're in the dead state, which makes it very easy for us. If this, if this bit is high, then we just stay in the dead state. If it's low, then we just continue on as, we're, as, we, as we are, essentially. And we can wire that into each of these AND gates additionally as well to shut them off if we're in that particular dead state. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. On, on that note, then, why if two zero and three one are both one in the case? Yes. You have it as a condition on every single two. No escape. <clears throat> but it helps you with one. So on the S zero case, the condition on zero, the same thing is dead state. So how is it zero? Is that how that works? Uh I would so the output for y is dependent on what state I'm currently in. So the way that I have this uh, state diagram um, right now is that I'm not really transitioning anywhere on the state S4 because the only place that I can go from the state S4 is, is the dead state. Red state. Yeah. Oh, wow, I skipped two. Oh, no, it's condensed. Sorry, never mind. I'm just not remembering things properly. Uh, so on four, the only place I can go is the dead state. So I didn't bother to code any transition. The output only depends on what state we're currently in. So it's a more machine, right? So the output does has nothing to do with the transition. It only matters what state we're currently in. The problem is two dead states. Transition plus zero on the zero is going to be a dead state for some of the two dead states. And then at four on the zero, four or one. Well, so the question is what's the output for the dead state? What do I output when I'm in the dead state? It doesn't though. It doesn't. But if you so if you're if you're on at zero and you get to zero, you go to the dead state. Should I retain my output if I transfer to a dead state? Is the question. According to this, yes. Two zero and three one are both. So in this case, you transition. I don't think that's necessarily true. I don't think that's I don't think this is painting that picture. I don't think this is actually addressing that question at all. Because I don't have a dead state on this transition diagram. So in other words, if I do want to throw a dead state in here, which I, I agree is perhaps a good idea, how would that change my state diagram? Well, I, I have this additional bid, right, we'll call it E2, which is high, the rest are low. That would also change these logic equations a bit, right? Uh, I'll leave it to you to go through. Again, I don't care what the transitions are, but the output then is going to be what? when I'm in that state. I get to choose. I'm not sure there's a particularly correct answer. It depends on where the output of this thing is going to. It depends on what I'm doing with this particular output. Um, right? I think in most cases, people <laughs> would argue to just leave it at zero. But that could be the wrong thing, depending on the context. I don't think you can say either way whether a dead state should be true or false, uh, necessarily. But again, the output depends on what state we are in. The fact that this is true is because of the fact that we are in state four. If we go somewhere else after that, this no longer matters. That has no effect. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, do you need the first trigger of the flag raising if you are not in the left? Do I need this? That's a good question. Is there a simplification here? Oh, no. I just have like, where, where is did it? You, like, where did you get that from? Where did I get that from? Did I read the wrong line? I probably just read the wrong line. There should be three terms, and I just read the wrong line, so I don't need it. Thank you. I really need a, you know, for those I need two more for like because these are coming from the same thing. I read this as B from the top row when I oh. wrote the equation. Yeah. <coughs> yep. Thanks. So that actually simplifies. That gets rid of one of that gets rid of this and gate up here. No longer necessary. Simplifies things a bit. Cool. Thanks for pointing that out. Yep. Um, so yeah, in this particular case, I, I started with the assertion that we didn't need to represent the dead state, and I now revise my opinion to say, actually, that's probably a pretty good idea to throw that dead state in there. Yep. Any other questions? Okay. Any other questions? All right. I think you should definitely practice doing the rest of these. We clearly don't have enough time to do the rest of these, but practice those. If you have any questions, Please let me know. There's actually several practice problems that we've run out of time to get to, so make sure you take the time to go back and try those out. Those are fair game for the exam or uh, homework assignments, etc.
So, uh, cool. I will see you guys on Thursday.